Okay, so here is the same example we previously worked on. Uh, I already filled some parts of it. So what I would like to show is basically the difference between standard subgame perfect Nash equilibrium requirement versus uh, the one deviation property requirement. And hopefully you'll see how uh, as one deviation property makes our life easier. So in this game, I look at this sort of inferior subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy profile. Remember BHDL. So the game over is with the payoff to zero. So here uh, I'm going to look at the everything from the first player's perspective. The, the second player is, is just, you know, his strategy is pretty straightforward, either left or right in this game. So player one is more interesting in that sense. So there are three histories uh, where we have to check uh, whether player one's strategy is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy or not. So because there are three histories where player one actually makes a move. What are those histories? So those histories such that pH equals the player number one. Well, these histories are the null history, the beginning of the game, AL, right? So after AL, player one is going to be moving and AR. So after AR, player one is moving again. So that's it. So now I'm going to define the continuation strategies. Pretty straightforward. So what is the continuation strategy? Remember, this is the strategy profile. So what is the continuation strategy of this strategy after history AL? Well, after AL, what is player one is supposed to play? Is it H or T? Well, obviously it is H. All right, so this is uh, how I denoted H. Well, what is the strategy for player one the continuation strategy after history AR. So is he going to play U or D? Well, clearly he's going to be playing D, right? Well, what about the continuation strategy after the null history? Well, it's the history, I mean, I'm sorry, the entire history of strategy itself. So BHD, all right? Well, what about the set of continuation strategies after those histories? So these are just one strategies, right? Pure strategies. Well, what is the set of all continuation strategies for player one after history AL? So after history AL, the only available strategy player one is playing H or playing T. So I denote them as H comma T. And as you see, this continuation strategy is just one of those. Well, what about the continuation strategy, set of continuation strategies after history AR? Well, it's either U or D. Well, once again, remember, this strategy is just one of them. So it's element. Well, what about this, BHD? So the set of all strategies for player one, basically, and there are uh, four plus four, eight strategies, pure strategies for player one, and clearly this is just one of them. Okay, so what about uh, one deviation strategies after those three histories? Okay, so the set of... Uh, so this is the set of one deviation strategies, all right? And so as you see, I mean, here obviously the one deviation strategy is going to be, remember, the set of available strategies is either H or T. So it could be at most two. But the thing is, uh, I want him play something different than H. So he's already playing H. So therefore only T. So there's only one... Uh, one deviation strategy after history AL, which is T. Similarly, there's only one, uh, one deviation strategy after history AR, which is U, because he is playing D, and th there could be only two strategies, and so therefore U. Hmm. So here is the nice uh, uh, part. The one deviation strategy after the null history, however, is just one out of those eight. Well, first off, BHD cannot be because he is playing that, so he should be playing something else. But one deviation strategy, remember, says the following. Player is going to play different from the strategy itself only after history H. For all the other histories, he's going to play exactly the same. So here, history H is the null history, meaning what he's going to behave at point one. So here, he can either choose A or B. But one deviation says, because he's supposed to play B, now I should be looking at other actions. AI, remember the definition? So here, it is A. Well, what about 
the other parts of uh, that strategy? Well, it's going to remain exactly the same. So it was BHD. Now it's got, it has to be AHD. All right. So that's it. That is, there's just one, uh, one deviation strategy for player one after history. And so if you look at the standard definition of uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, it says a strategy profile, a star, pure strategy, is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium if uh, for every player I and for every history age where player I makes a move, player I's utility under S star, the continuation strategy S star, has to be greater than or equal to uh, this continuation uh, payoff where player I, player I plays something different than uh, the continuation strategy S I star. All right, and this has to be true for every uh, sort of uh, strategies, continuation strategies. So for example, when I take the history as A L, well, checking thing is easy because he is playing H, but the alternative is playing T. All right, so therefore I'm going to use this inequality for player one only once after history AL, same for AR. However, when I'm looking at the null history, there are, remember, eight possible deviation for player one. Obviously, SI uh, star, I mean, the BHD uh, is one of them. So therefore, I have to compare the payoff of BHD to all the other strategies player one has. How many? Seven others. So I have to make this comparison seven times for player one. Um, obviously, again, in order to check subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, I have to do the same thing for player two. But again, I'm focusing on player one only. One deviation property says the following. Yes, you should still do this comparison, the payoff comparison, whether he's, he's maximizing his payoff or not, uh, for each player and for every history. Uh, but the thing is, you don't have to compare after every history. You have to compare only the one deviation histories, which are element of uh, capital SOD slash history. So that means when the history, for example, the null history, you don't have to make this comparison seven times, meaning what would be player one's payoff when he played SHD, oh, I'm sorry, oops, BHD, right? This is the S star, comma L, the, the second player strategy L. Is this greater than or equal to U1, the one deviation strategy, which is AHD? comma L. So that's the only thing you need to check. You don't have to check, for example, is this payoff greater than uh, utility of one under AHU, all right? Or ATU or ATD. You don't have to check that, all right? You have to check them for SPNE, but you don't have to check it if you're using one deviation property. So you see that reduces significantly uh, the number of inequalities you need to check uh, to verify whether a strategy profile is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or not. Um, well, obviously, let's let's look at this. What would be the payoff for player one? B H D L. All right, versus AHDL. So BHDL, we know his payoff is two. What about AHD? AHDL is one. So therefore, actually this strategy is the best response, okay? And in fact, if you do the same thing for every other strategies, you'll see that uh, BHD is better than all those other strategies. Maybe strictly, maybe not, but it is better than, well, that, that's normal because this strategy is in Ash equilibrium, SP and E, it should be. But as I said, when the game is complicated, meaning there are too many players or too many actions or too many potential histories, well, then this, meaning the one deviation property is going to make our life much easier. Um, we'll talk about some examples.